Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hills Road Introduction to College Sports. Um, my name is Aidan Duffy. I'm the head of sports at the college. I'm joined by Linda Swain, who is our sports activator and netball coach. Uh, Linda and I will go through the presentation today. Uh, and at the end, we will take lots and lots of questions from you, uh, which will be led by Linda. So to start, uh, many thanks again for coming in. Uh, Hills Row 61 College then. So we are the top sports college in the east of England. And we have been for the last six years. We've got over 37 sports teams in 21 different sports. Um, we've also got uh, a huge club sports and enrichment sports program. So the college sport is broken up into three different categories. We've got competitive sports, club sports and enrichment sports. Um, I will go over today um, as much as I can about the three different categories. However, there is lots and lots of information on the Hills Road um, sport website. OK, so I put it in here. You go to the college sport uh, page and under sixth form student life, there is college sport. Um, like I said, we've got competitive sport where we are. The students are competing um, every single week. Club sport is where students train regularly. Uh, they will play more informally uh, or they may have one off competitions and then enrichment sport, which is turn up and play. So like I said, uh, competitive sport then, the Clifford Dixon winners. This is for the college that can, gets the most amount of points in the east of England for the Association of Colleges competitions. So the Association of Colleges is the old books uh, competitions. Um, lots and lots of colleges in the east of England will play in this. And uh, last year, we amassed 150 points uh, with the next with the runners up coming up at Colchester with 83, USP 76, Long Road 6 from College at 66 points. So way out in front. Um, we've also, like I said, we've won this the last six years on the bounce. So competitive sport, what competitive sport looks like is all the teams will train every single week. They may, um, they will have a coach on most occasions. They will compete in leagues. They will compete in cups, regional championships, national championships. Uh, commitment is around about five hours a week, so they will train and play in matches most weeks. The biggest difference between compet uh, competitive sport at college in comparison to school sport is it's, it's the same as club sport. It's not a turn up one week, not turn up the next. The commitment level is extremely high, hence why we're so competitive and why we um, do so well in the, the regional and national championships. Fixtures can be um, within an hour, two hours. They can even be up to three, four or five hours once we make it through to the quarters, semi-finals and national finals um, throughout all of the sports. So we start with the regional uh, and local leagues. And then if we do well in those, we branch out to play more at national. So this is the one, this is the competition, uh, the biggest competition for the competitive sports. This is the national championships. So we play uh, these are all the different regions throughout the country. Uh, and the national championship sports uh, for AOC are these 11 sports here. So badminton, basketball, cricket, cross-country football, golf, hockey, netball, rugby union, tennis and volleyball. And this is men's and women's for all of them. So we all compete in these sports at different regional events. If you win your region uh, against all the other colleges in the east of England, you will then be picked for the, the, the east of England squad and you will compete against... East Midlands, London, North East, etc. Um, if we look over here, it's a three day event. Usually it's in April. This year it was cancelled the first time. Um, there are over 1,700 students competing in it, 375 staff, 171 different colleges. It's like a mini Olympics for college competitive sport. It's a fantastic event. Um, and we have the last um, three consecutive years, we've had the biggest squad in England um, at this event. So. Bar a couple of bar a few students, the east um, east of England um, east of England team was a Hills Road team. So last year, the 2019 event, we had 82 students competing in the east of England competition. Club sports. So enrolment for club sports usually happens at the Freshers' Fair at the start of the academic year. Um, some club sports will train on a weekly basis. Some will meet on an ad hoc basis. Some sports. Uh, will depend on uh, the student numbers interested. So, for example, um, last year we didn't have many equestrian team students. However, this year we've got over 15 uh, that will be competing in events after January due to COVID restrictions. 
Um, again, swimming last year, really, really good. They got to the semi-finals of the English schools. Uh, cross country and athletics was incredibly um, competitive this year and did uh, a number of events in the English schools, the AOC um, National Athletics Championship and squash play on an ad hoc basis. They will play uh, against uh, local teams like the Lees, the Perse, uh, moving forward. So every year we had different club sports. In the past, we've had clay pigeon shooting. Um, it comes and goes. So if, if a student joins and they go, actually, I want to set up uh, this particular sport, they would get in contact with me or the sports department, and then we would do our best to get that sport under, underway. Enrichment sports, so this is what students can sign up. It's more of a turn and play. So there's no fixtures involved. The uh, commitment level is quite low. We've got things in there such as archery, we've got lots of badminton, racket sports, squash, five-a-side football. We've got our learn to row um, team, a learn to row, sorry, uh, course. So the learn to row this year is going to be happening over half term because of the COVID restrictions. Oh, sorry, the, the, the COVID restrictions have just changed for, for rowing. So the learn to row will be going ahead. So students that have never got on the water before will, will get the chance to go. Uh, social netball, lots of tennis. We've got dance studios, dance. We've got a cheer team this year as well. It started off as an enrichment sport, progressed to a club sport, and are now a competitive sport. So, you know, lots and lots of change. If there's opportunities there, students want to build to start a new sport, they're just going to get in touch and we will do our best to put them uh, to facilitate that. So sport combinations. I'm not expecting you to be able to read this. This has been uh, taken straight off the, the college sport website. This is all the different sports that we had uh, last year. We're working at about 70% capacity at the moment with COVID, which um, is extremely high in comparison to most of the colleges uh, in the UK, not just the, the region. Um, so if you can see, if it's green, you can, you can play those two sports at the same time. Uh, if it's red, it means that they are training or competing at the same time and not able to take place. The amber ones are where there are some clashes. So for example, um, two teams may train at different times, but they're, they're a club sport and they have, or they're a competitive sport, but, or, but they don't play every week. So you could rotate you know, different times of the year, for example. Um, so it gives lots of options, but there are a huge amount of sports that you can play at the same time uh, moving throughout the year. So please do have a look at this on the College Sport website. So fantastic sports facilities. Um, We've got a huge amount of facilities at the college. So we've got on the, on the campus, we've got a, a gym, we've got a sports uh, hall, we've got uh, indoor, we've got four indoor courts, we've got six outdoor courts from the acrylic, the clay. We've got an indoor cricket, two indoor cricket lanes with bowling machines. Um, other facilities across Cambridge that we use, we've got the Cantabs uh, rowing club, the boathouse, we've got um, the Shelford rugby pitch, the new 4G pitch. We use uh, Wilberforce Road, uh, Cambridge University um, hockey pitches on a weekly basis. And we've got our own uh, grounds up at Luard Road, um, just off Long Road. We've got uh, two football pitches, a cricket pitch and two rugby pitches. Likewise, we've also got uh, two dance studios that we use uh, on the college site. So fantastic sports facilities. Ski trip. Every year we have a ski trip. Um, this is the, the, is it going to happen this year? We're not quite sure. Uh, we're hoping that it may, that if, if COVID um, slows down, it may possibly be able to move it from February half term to Easter. We've been, we've had some form of ski trips since the 1960s, so we certainly don't want to stop now. The past two years I've been running the trip, we have had, uh, we took 58 students last year um, to Zillertal in Austria, uh, with six members of staff, we stayed at the Hotel Harthof. So 56 students and seven staff. Usually it's at February half term, so we're aiming to keep it there. But this year, for example, we may be going uh, Easter. The cost of the trip is very expensive, uh, but what you get for your money is, is very good. So it's around about £950. The reason it's gone up to, potentially up to 1100 is because we don't know the implications of COVID. Um, or when you are hit with us next year. There's usually a parents meeting in September where you can find out all the information. Um, with regards to the cost, it is worth noting that that is uh, half board, that's all your uh, ski lessons, that's all your evening entertainment, accommodation, um, insurance, everything. It is an all in thing. The only thing you need is your lunch money, okay? 
Um, but there will be more information coming towards that. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, I'm going to play a very short video, just giving you an overview of college sport. It's only about a minute long, so it gives you a snapshot of what is on offer at the college. And then we'll move into the question and answer uh, opportunity at the end with Linda. Brilliant. So I'm going to introduce you now to Linda Swain. Linda Swain is our sports activator at the college. She's been with us for 12 years, I believe, Linda. She'll correct me if I'm wrong. Can't hear you, Linda. So um, I'll take over then for this. Uh, for this. Uh, so we've had a question from uh, Lucy. Uh, can anyone use the gym at any time during school hours? Um, yes. So when you join the college, there will be uh, a course fee. Um, and that will give you access to the gym every single year. So you'll be able to use the gym at uh, any point uh, during the college hours. Use, at the moment, uh, students can use the gym, but they need to book in due to COVID restrictions. But yes, anyone can use the gym at any point. Uh, I've got a question here from Eleanor. Are the teams hard to get into? Um, yes, some of the, well, most of the competitive teams are very, very competitive. They are uh, regional and national standard for some of the teams. However, likewise, we also have representative teams as well. Uh, for example, the football teams have got three teams alongside uh, futsal competitions. Uh, I think, Linda, you might, your sound might have come back. Is that right? Has it come back? Can you hear me now? It has, Linda. Right. Do you want to take back over, Linda? Over to you. What happened there? Apologies. You know, everything to do with technology. Um, uh, a good question here from Bethan. Can you try out for more than one competitive sports team? Um, you can, uh, but it all depends on whether they are the major sports that we run because um, they actually all train and play at the same time. Uh, this year, because of the restrictions, we only allowed you to train for or, or trial for one team. But in, in the past, we've allowed you to trial for more than one. And then you can see which one you're most successful in. Uh, this is a question here from a guest. Um, are the teams mixed between year 13 and year 12? Yes, they are. We do keep in uh, bubbles during the um, academic side of things, but in the sports, the two year groups are mixed. Where, uh, one from Amelia, where does the women's cricket train? We train actually on the site in the cricket net area. And then we play our games in Luard Road. Um, Imogen wants to know if the cricket team is mixed, boys and girls, or separate. We've never had enough girls, actually, to field a whole team of girls. But in the past, we've definitely had mixed teams. And we've had some very successful girl cricketers. Uh, question here from Sophie. Can you explain about the competitive cricket teams? How many sides are there? ladies team and what is the strength as i've said it at the moment we've had mixed we haven't had whole women cricket um, teams and usually they are of quite a good standard uh, another good question here uh, from lucas um, is training for the competitive sports after school no um, uh, quite a lot of the competitive sports the um, training times are during the college day. 
However, that doesn't apply to all of them, but the majority. Kelly wants to know how to get into the competitive sports teams like hockey. We hold trials every year for all the competitive sports. And um, these trials last sometimes over a couple of days because we usually have quite a lot of interest in most of the sports that we offer here. Emily wants to know if we have a swimming pool. Unfortunately not. Wish we did, but that's one of the things we can't actually um, provide here at Hills Road. So most of our swimmers uh, come to us with their, um, their swimming skills already, but we do enter them into um, the English schools competitions. One here from Imogen, how much is the course fee for using the gym? Um, that actually comes in with your um, like a registration fee that the college um, our students to pay into. Um, at the moment, I don't think there is a separate fee for that one. Yeah, I believe off the top of my head, it's fifty pounds for the two years. So that includes uh, their registration fees um, to join the college, as well as the access to the gym, all the facilities. That's including the tennis facilities, the sports hall, the cricket hall, uh, Luard Road space, uh, indoor and outdoor tennis courts. So that's a, a, that's a £50 for two years all-in fee. Yeah, so the, the gym's actually included in that fee. Um, from Grace, how is the netball training sessions typically structured? How long, team sizes and level required? Um, the netball training is usually an hour and a half a week. Uh, the standard is quite high. We ask most um, netballers to be part of a club already and playing competitive netball. Um, for instance, we had 70 people this year trial for the team and we took on uh, 14 new players this year. Uh, question from Ben, what's the tennis structure like? Teams kit and training. The tennis is, again, um, you train every week and uh, you can buy a kit for, to play tennis or wear your own, and you're entered into several competitions um, that come along throughout the year. Uh, good question from Hannah. What level is the cheer team? Um, I'm not very good on the cheer side, but I believe that it, uh, people that come to Hills that are interested in cheer are very good um, at what they do and are very good at gym and they organize themselves with a, a coach that comes in occasionally and they have entered a competition last year and they were actually the winners of the under 18 category of elite. Um, question here from Aiden. Hayden, do uh, competitive teams have more than one team, A and B, or is it just one? No, several of the sports have uh, a, B, and some of the sports have a C team as well. So, uh, for instance, the rugby have three teams, the football have three teams, the netball have two teams, and the hockey have um, uh, mixed teams and uh, a girls team. A uh, question here from Alexander. How do you actually sign up? Is it on the Hills website or do you just turn up to trials and get registered there? Uh, when you have been given your offer letter um, to join Hills Road, you will be given an application form to put in all the sports that you're interested in and it will ask you certain questions about your level and you will um, be notified then when the trial dates are. Uh, Olivia, this is a good question. Is there likely to be any competitive rowing? There's loads of competitive rowing. Um, we have local rowing competitions, the Bumps on the River Cam, and they also um, enter the head of the, the Thames and any other local regattas that there are um, in and around the east. Um, question here from James on cricket again. What formats of cricket, cricket are played? We actually play indoor cricket with the AOC, that's the Association of Colleges, and we actually play local colleges in the east at cricket in the summer outside at Luard Road. Katie, how many uh, hockey teams are there? There's a, a women's uh, hockey team, a men's hockey team and a mixed hockey team. 
Um, at the moment, the Association of Colleges have changed from having single sex competitions to being mixed teams. Um, so in future, it looks like there's going to be more mixed teams in the AOC competition, but that still doesn't prevent us from playing uh, in a friendly uh, competition with local colleges in and around the area. Uh, question from Hannah, does it matter if you haven't done netball outside of school to get onto the team? Yes, it probably does matter because the level is quite high, um, but I would suggest that uh, if you haven't done much netball, you join the social netball, which is part of the enrichment program, and you'll get to play at least an hour a week uh, and have fun while you do it. Uh, another question here. How many hours a week is the social netball? Well, I've just said that's an hour a week uh, and it's a fun session, so it's not too serious. Holly, what is the entry process for the girls' rugby team? Uh, they have a trial just like any other team. Uh, we had quite a few this year. I think there was about 20 girls um, came along to trial and all 20 of them are part of the rugby setup that we have now at the college. One from uh, Georgina, is there a competitive athletics team? Yes, there is. We don't actually have a team as such um, that train on a regular basis, but we invite all those people that have done athletics before to enter the different categories um, that they are keen to take part in, and we take them to the AOC Indoor Athletics Competition that happens normally in the autumn term. Another question here that Mr. Duffy actually did mention in his presentation, uh, where can you find the graph that shows which sports conflict with which? Um, please go to the college website under the sport and you will find that graph there. Just, just to add to that, Linda, um, the chart, if you go to FAQ, so frequently asked questions on the sports website, I believe that chart can be found on question three. Um, can you do more than one sport? So it's, uh, it's sort of hidden a little bit in a link, um, question three. Um, as me, if you uh, said, if you don't get into the competitive team straight away, when do you next have a chance to trial? Um, you can have a, uh, you are, have the opportunity to trial again the following year in the upper six and you will be given the dates uh, the same as the new entrance and you'll be invited to trial. Let's go to Freya. If you do cricket, do we have to provide our own kit? Um, kit in what sense? Uh, clothing kit? Uh, I'm sure we do provide some form of cricket kit and um, most of the cricketers come along with their own um, equipment. Uh, any more on that, Aidan? Yeah, so um, we provide obviously shirts. The cricket team have their own kit, as in shirts, etc. Um, but the, st the students would bring their own pads, bats, etc. We provide balls, obviously, but usually with cricket, obviously, everyone will have their own um, protective gear uh, due to health and safety and um, hygiene reasons. So students would usually bring their own. They can store it at the college in the, in the cricket cupboard uh, at their own risk, but they would usually bring their own equipment. One from Georgina for netball is playing for a club absolutely necessary or would it be all right to play regularly just not for a club? Um, yes it doesn't prevent you from trialing uh, it, it, it you know you can come along and trial we, we just advise you that it, it may be better for you to uh, play for a club because of um, the, the, the standard is quite high but you're more than um, uh, welcome to come and, and, and take a trial, uh, as with all the other sports as well. A question from Rosalind. Would you consider doing more different sports if there is enough interest? Definitely. We've done lots of different sports in the past. Uh, one, for instance, was clay pigeon shooting. We did have a group of youngsters that wanted to do that, and they were quite successful. So if you want to do a sport that's not on offer, please come and see us in the um, sports department and we will see what we can do. Just to add to that, Linda, an, an example of uh, students contacting us uh, would be this summer. So uh, a number of students actually contacted the sports department and they're really keen to set up a lacrosse team. 
So they've been in uh, dialogue with uh, Linda and I over the summer about getting some funding, uh, some facilities and coaching to actually set up a lacrosse team uh, in the spring term. So we've never had a lacrosse team before, uh, but that's something in the pipeline. Um, another example is about five years ago, students approached about a court ball team. Um, and a court ball team, uh, provided we have numbers, that's been going for about five years now. Um, so if students are interested, then do get in contact and we will we'll do our best to facilitate that. Um, I might hand this next question, how competitive is the football team to get into? Mr Duffy is one of the football coaches and perhaps you'd like to say how difficult it is to get into the yeah, football team. <laughs> sure. So we've got three men's football teams and uh, a women's football team. Um, I saw a question on the women's football team earlier uh, down, the, down the, the question, so I'll answer that as well. Uh, so with regards to the men's first team, so I'm the men's first team coach. They compete in the AOC uh, 2A league, which is the second highest league unless you're going to the full-time academy uh, elite teams. Um, last year we were top of the league prior to COVID. Um, the year before that we, we won the regional championship, we won the league and we came fifth in the country at the national championships. Uh, the year before that, we won. We went over to Holland to compete in the Easter Open Cup, um, which was against all uh, uh, full-time academy teams. Um, we, there was two other colleges there, teams from Spain, Switzerland, France, Germany, um, you name it, they were there. Uh, and we actually got to the final and won the competition. So the first team uh, is very, very competitive. Um, obviously, each year, uh, sometimes that, you know, it's more competitive than others, but uh, the last few years have been particularly competitive. The second and third team, they compete in a local Cambridge uh, Development League. So they play against big colleges, uh, second teams and third teams, and also smaller colleges, first teams. So the, the men's first team will play around about 25 to 30 games a season, depending on how they do in the Cups. The second and third team play anywhere between 15 and 20. The women's team, they will play around about 15 games uh, or 10 to 15 games, depending on what league they're in, depending on the standard that comes through each year. But again, in the women's team, we have some students that have, have not played a huge amount of football to those that have played a uh, very, very high standard. So a couple of years ago, we had the England under 19s uh, captain, Fran Steele, uh, and then in previous, so this year particularly, we've got quite a strong women's team or a core, a strong core team. So lots of um, levels, you know, there's there's something for everybody in most sports. Right, th th thank you, uh, Mr. Duffy. Um, going on to, um, are any competitive teams with clubs if we enjoy the sport but aren't, a, aren't at the top of the level? Yes, there are. There, we have what we call enrichment sport, uh, and you can choose those uh, as part uh, of a sporting uh, offer that, that we allow you to do um, badminton at a, a different level, netball at a different level, tennis at a different level. Um, so there are other activities or the same sports you can do, but not on the competitive um, front. Uh, they are more sociable um, type events. So if you don't want to compete at the top or you're not sure whether you can, uh, but still enjoy the sport, there are other opportunities for you to take part. Corin, unfortunately, there is no handball team at, at the college. But again, if you're interested in handball, and there are lots of others that uh, want to take part in this sport, I'm sure we can try and um, arrange for a time available for these people to get together and, and play uh, that game. Sophie uh, wants to know how many cricket coaches do we have? We have one as far as I'm aware. Um, and uh, they, they, uh, they're just the one coach who takes the, the cricket. Right, the one uh, question from Fraser, is it possible to play for any other teams if your own squad has not got a game? Uh, unfortunately not, Fraser, because um, you know we have set numbers in, in the teams and it, it, it's not really interchangeable. Um, and also, uh, it, it doesn't help with your timetable. Uh, if you're, you're timetabled for one sport, you may not necessarily be available at a time for the other sport. Uh, and the squads would already have been picked. 
and the teams would have already been chosen. So unfortunately on that one, it's a bit too difficult. Just, just to add to that, Linda, it's worth noting that, you know, the competitive sports is very different to, to school sports where you kind of, you know, you have a game for your cricket team, you might play for the football team, it's usually the same students. In the competitive sports, they are very competitive um, in most of the sports. The club sports, uh, again, the you know, club sports and enrichment sports, some of those you may be able to um, play more on an ad hoc basis, uh, certainly with the enrichment sports, but the competitive sports is, you know, you're certainly making a step up uh, and competing at a regional national um, standard. Uh, on to Sophie, is there a heel sports netball kit? Yes, there is. We wear uh, netball dresses. Uh, you don't have to purchase them. We have a set of dresses that we hand out to um, the new squads and they hand them back at the end of the season. Question here from Rosalind. Do many students do some type of extracurricular sports? Lots of students do extra extracurricular sports, but they're not always um, obviously offered by Hills Road. Lots of people do sports outside of the college. Um, and so you just you can choose from the club sports if you if you want to be engaged with those, or you can choose an enrichment sport as part of your choice. And then, as I said, there's the competitive sport if you want to try for those teams. Just to add to that, Linda, just to give an exact number. Uh, so we've got currently two and a half thousand students at the college, uh, and last year we had uh, 1,100 of those students were taking part in sports. Uh, at some point throughout the year. So just under half the students um, are taking part in sport in either the enrichment club or competitive sport. So a huge amount of students actually take part in some part of sport at the college. Good question here from Emily. She swims for a competitive team and would like to know how difficult it is in to, to get into the college's swim team. I'm not sure it'd be that difficult at all, Emily, because the number, the, the many people that want to swim, if they want to tell us what which areas uh, the, that they want to compete in, um, if we can find uh, enough uh, people to to take part in a team, I'm I'm sure you know you will have every opportunity to swim, um, and and represent Hills Road. Abby wants to know what types of dance do do we do? Um, I'm not that familiar with dance. Um, there is dance as a way of keeping fit, which is offered as part of the enrichment programme. Um, but the drama group um, or performing arts um, offer uh, a dance uh, area to, to join in. Um, I, I really am struggling with that one. Do you know? Uh, I can help a little bit with that. So with regards to the dance, you've got the A-level dance qualification, uh, you've got Performing Arts Department, they they do a number of productions, they do a number of dance routines, um, but it's all, all done through the Performing Arts Department as opposed to uh, the Sports Department. Uh, in addition to that, we've got the cheer team, which is more gymnastics as well as dance. Um, and then we've also got, like like Linda said, we've got a, uh, a fitness dance um, session as well. So there's, um, there's, there's something for everybody there, I would argue. Okay, Leah wants to know what standard is the golf team? The standard is whatever you are. We have two sorts of golf. We have um, golf where you can enter the competitions that are available and represent the college. Or we have like a beginner's golf um, enrichment program. So if, if you want to learn more about golf or improve your golf, then that would, the enrichment uh, golf would be for you, but if you are uh, a good level golfer, uh, we'd be happy to enter in, you into the competitions that are available at uh, national schools and association of colleges. Yeah, just to add to that, Linda, with regards to the, the competitive golf, uh, the handicap for the competitions, I think, is 24 for women and 12 for, um, for the men, I believe, off the top of my head. Uh, and like you said, with the uh, enrichment golf, We've got some students that um, have played a little bit. We've got some students that have never played golf, and we we had a one to one. We so not one to one. We had a an ex professional that came down and did a couple of sessions with the students this, this year, um, and then we've gone up to the Cambridge uh, pitch and putt to learn about the etiquette, learn about how to play basic pitch and putt, and go from there. So again, 
something for competitive golfers and something for more recreational golfers. Uh, Leah wants to know, are football teams given a kit for matches and training? Yes, you're definitely given a kit for matches and you wear your own kit for training. Kelly would like to know, can you do enrichment sport and a competitive sport? That's quite difficult. You, if you are doing a competitive sport, that counts as your enrichment. So you are, you're not required to sign up for anything else on the enrichment programme. Uh, this one that I'm going to hand over to Mr Duffy. How many trialists do you have for men's football? I think it's about 60, is it? Yeah, it ranges between about 60 and 70. Um, and we take on around about, depending on the previous cohort, about 25 to 30 students each year. But yeah, it's about 60 to 70. So particularly with the football is, is one of the highest standards uh, in the sports. Similarly with the with the netball team as well. So the netball and the football team are some of the more competitive sports. Moving on to rowing, uh, from a, a question from Emma. How many people get into the rowing team compared to the people who trial for it? Um, we've had in the past about 20 people trial for the rowing team and most people actually stay and uh, are entered into competitions because there's lots of different levels of competition. So there's very few um, turned away from the, the people who trial. In fact, I don't remember anybody being turned away. Uh, question from Alexander, how many people are selected for the tennis squad? I'm not really sure. I think we do two for, we take on four men, four women, um, so that they can do doubles and singles. But I think the, t the teams uh, train together and I think we have anything up to 12 to 16 people as a, in general. Yeah, we've got about, I think there's about 16 that compete um in the two teams so we've got uh, a first team and second team we then play also friendlies as well which are with the third teams we've got some we've, we've got some really 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 competitive uh tennis players and we also got we have round robin tournaments as well for the summer uh, and play lots of friendlies as well right um how many people are selected for rugby um i think most of the people that turn up for rugby are selected because we just uh, run a, an extra squad. This year we're running three squads and that, that usually takes up most of the people that want, want to uh, take part in rugby. Freya wants to know how many people trial for hockey and get on the team. Um, again, the numbers for hockey this year was a bit lower uh, and the majority of those that trialled did get onto the team. Uh, Liam wants to know: Would school sport take priority? Would sorry, would school sport prioritise from the county? It would, depending on which sport it is that you're taking part in. We actually put the college sport first before club sport, uh, and it all depends what the uh, sport is and what the county commitment is from that particular person but we would need to discuss that one and see what we could work out yeah i'll just add to that linda it kind of it works on a case-by-case -case basis for example the football teams lots of the football teams players play in club sports uh they'll also be playing uh during the midweek but alongside our college team so our college teams generally play on wednesday afternoon and um, some uh, club teams will play on a Thursday or have FA Cup preliminary round games during the same week. So we have a, a, a blanket um, expectation that students are available for, for, for college games every single week, irrespective of whether they've got a big cup game, they've got an FA Cup game, or they're playing for whoever team. If you are a member of the college team, you are available every single week. Um, if you're not able to commit every week, then it's very likely that you wouldn't be on the college team. This is quite a long question from Sophie. If you got picked for a team and then have a few bad games uh, where you don't play to the expected standard, would you get kicked out of the team? If you weren't picked initially, would you have another chance if this happened to someone else? Um, well, we don't normally kick people out of a team if uh, they had a few bad games. We would uh, try and encourage them um, to maybe put in some extra training or, 
or uh, give them some advice of how they could improve. Um, we're not usually kicking people off a team and therefore um, I don't see the opportunity of bringing more people up unless um, some teams were very short in the first instance or there were uh, other things that happened. If people dropped out of their own accord and they were and we were short of players, then there would maybe be an opportunity to bring people up. But there is a the problem there is that your um, timetables are configured to fit sport into them. So if you didn't get into the team and your um, timetable didn't reflect that you would be available when that team trained, it would be quite difficult to move you. But that doesn't mean to say it's impossible. We could ask that question. Uh, Hannah wants to know if um, training overlaps with lessons. No, no training overlaps with any lessons. It's timetabled so that these do not clash. Just to add to that, Linda, I would say, you know, the, the, the major competitive sports teams, all of their trials will take place during the summer. Um, all that information will be sent to you once you've got an offer letter. Um, so it is imperative that you m uh, get to that trial in the summer. It's usually around about June, July time. Um, it's usually how it falls around the time that prom is for those schools in year 11. So if you are really serious about playing competitive sport um, when you come to Hills, it is really important that you come to those trials. Not firstly because you know, you want to stand out to the coaches to make sure you get in the team. But those coaches then need to make sure that your timetable fits with the coaching and the matches. Because if they to do that, then regardless of how good you are, you won't be able to play competitive sport because you will have maths or chemistry on a Wednesday afternoon or a Tuesday morning on their training. So it's really, really, really important that you make it to the, uh, the trials in the summer. Um, I think that's, that's bringing us to a close. And I think the questions have stopped. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Linda for doing the, the questions. Uh, many thanks to all of you that tuned in. Um, if anybody has any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to contact me, uh, aduffy at hillsroad.ac.uk. There is lots and lots and lots of information on the College Sports website. If you go to the main website, look under College Life and click Sports. There's all the competitions that we enter for individual sports. There's all the achievements from last year. There is a commitment levels that is required of each of the sports. And likewise, there's also the um, table that shows which sports uh, you can play at the same time as other sports. So Hills Road has a huge amount of sport on offer, whether it's competitive club or enrichment. I've no, I've no doubt there is something for everybody. But um, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Many thanks for tuning in. Uh, and I hope you have uh, a good um, rest of your evening. Many thanks. Good night, everybody.